Hi, this is Alvin, and welcome to the Kickstart Commerce Podcast, where we share search marketing and domain name investing strategies to help grow your business. In today's episode, our guest is none other than Drew Wash, a longtime domain investor and entrepreneur of MovingSites.com, a host of website communities designed to bring experts together. Today, Drew and I discuss his early days of domain investing how domain development changed his life, the various business models, websites, and premium domains operated by Moving Sites, LLC. And last but not least, something that I definitely can't wait to hear more about is upcoming an upcoming documentary about developing three premium domains uh, into profitable businesses by NamesCon 2019. So with that, Drew, welcome, and thank you for making time to join us today. Alvin, very cool to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. So you and I, uh, I guess, crossed paths. I received an email from you uh, just in regards to obtaining video footage of from the NamesCon 2018 auction live. Uh, right? I think I think that's how we. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was on. Um, let me see. Names Pro and uh, somebody in the forum kind of said, "Hey, reach out to Alvin over here. I mean, he might have video." And uh, so yeah, I hunted you down and checked with you. <laughs> and unfortunately, I had video coverage of everything with the exception of the NamesCon 2018 auction. So boo boo to that. Yeah, yeah. I'm still looking for it. So I hopefully uh hopefully we'll come about it as at some point. Yeah. And if anybody, hopefully, if anybody's listening and knows of anyone, definitely we'll include uh, Drew's contact information there on my blog on this actual episode so that you can uh, contact Drew. So to kick things off, Drew, tell the listeners a bit about yourself, who you are, your professional and your personal background. Okay. Well, uh, I am a born entrepreneur, so I love to experiment, love to try new things in business. And, uh, I just so happen to be born at a time when, uh, hit that late high school time when you try to figure out, uh, how you're going to take on life. And this thing, uh, this thing called the internet started to be big. So just, uh, a lot of lucky timing and, uh, a lot of different funny stories all came together and I started to learn how to code and build websites and uh, market those websites. And, um, you know, through uh, just trying to scrap and make money uh, through college, uh, found that uh, premium domain names and uh, in turn search engine optimization is a great way to generate business (laughs) and uh, did exactly that. So I became a domain investor and, um, just a search engine optimization expert uh, and use those domains to uh, actually sell spy software. Uh, Nice. Yeah. So through affiliate, you know, through affiliate links and then even a little uh, getting into the coding myself, uh, sold spy software, paid my way through uh, college and, uh, and shortly after college for the betterment of everybody, including probably society uh, that business crashed just after uh, cleaning my savings out to a, put the debt deposit down on my house. <laughs> oh, wow. so that, was, that was about uh, 2003. So, uh, so where did you, so where did you uh, go to college or attend college? Uh, I'm a Buckeye. So Ohio state, uh, so, the Ohio state. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't do the whole the thing, but uh, yes, the Ohio state university. So I'm a Cincinnati born and raised kid. Uh, furthest I've ever lived from home is, uh, you know, hundred miles up the road in Columbus for those uh, four or five years as I was in college. So. Nice, nice. Now, Drew, I, I did a bit of, of research beforehand and found out, um, and, you know, just before we get into the details, something interesting that struck me about your LinkedIn profile was uh, discovering that you and your wife operate a, uh, I guess, like a travel agency or, or, or rather a website um, <laughs> called planacruise.com. And so that that struck me as intriguing, one, because it's a husband-wife duo, but then just planacruise.com. How did you come across this business, the domain and, you know? Okay. Well, uh, that's actually, uh, if if you asked her, she would, uh, probably, uh, tell a little bit of a different story because I I roped her in. So (laughs) like I said, as, as an entrepreneur, I'm an experimenter. So, um, I had, uh, we, we work a lot in transportation and, uh, I just, everybody wants to work and travel, including me travels fun. It's sexy. It's, uh, you get to go out into the world. So my attempt to, 
uh, kind of move into travel a little bit. Uh, I don't do anything, uh, you know, halfway. I uh, wrote, <laughs> wrote to my wife and said, Hey, you know, let's, let's kind of learn about the travel industry. Let's both go to travel agent classes and learn how to do this. And, uh, because I'm a domainer, uh, I did what, uh, what I do and made sure I had some premium domain names lined up to do it. So I got, uh, let me see, planetcruise.com is the one that, uh, I use for it currently, but I, I, we bought some other ones as well, like travel socially.com, I think is us. And, uh, a, a couple other ones that we were looking to create some kind of business on, uh, currently just as a travel agency. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, my, <laughs> my wife currently is a travel agent. I'm also a travel agent, but, uh, she runs a travel agency because I roped her into it. Uh, kind of a sore subject a little bit with her so (laughs) (laughs) so so fortunately we don't have her on with this today (laughs) or it may be a different story as you oh yeah yeah. she she has uh she you you need to get facial expressions uh you know i'm sure it would show up in her voice but uh i I took her down to fort lauderdale and she fought me the entire time like what am i doing with this like this is insane now nowadays it's kind of nice because we do love traveling and uh, you know, she's gotten the help a decent amount of people book their travel. So, uh, right. but really for the most part, I'm not that involved in it as of some point I might create, uh, I have some different ideas, uh, for businesses on those domains, but, uh, it's a little outside of our standard business model. So I don't, uh, I don't pursue it much. Gotcha. And is it, is it still an operating operation today? I assume that it is. Or um, I think it directs to, uh, to like a, just some other uh, travel page for her, like her uh, homepage or something for a franchise. I, I honestly don't know too terribly much. I do know that if I ever go to uh, code, um, the business ideas that I had for that, that domain name would be yanked and it would be uh, a standalone product. And she just would happen to be a travel agency with some, new obscure maybe less valuable domain <laughs> at her disposal <laughs> gotcha gotcha so then i guess getting back into you know domain investing how did you get introduced into domain investing uh it all uh, goes back to spy software actually um back in uh let me see it was probably 2000 i think uh it, I was an SEO guy. So search engine optimization, trying to figure out ways to top the search engines for keywords related to spy software. Uh, and me and the other guys, the main players in that industry, we're all trying to, we, we all knew each other and we were all competing against each other. Uh, and we started to figure out that domains mattered. Uh, and back then uh, I was getting, you know, hyphenated domain names because they worked as well as anything else. And, uh, then, uh, one of the guys that I competed against made the crazy decision to buy spysoftware.com. No clue what's on that site anymore. Go at your own risk. <laughs> but, uh, he, he, I think he paid like 30,000 or something for it. It was like this unheard of sum for this college kid. And I was like, I was like, that's just crazy. But I mean, it ended up topping the search engines and outperformed our, uh, you know, hyphenated domain names. And it was kind of one of those first times I really saw that the domain name matters. It really is. Uh, it, it matters to creating business for websites and creating exposure for companies. And uh, he, you know, he made his money back and I was, it, it really sunk in that uh, I needed to get away from the hyphenated domains and really start looking at more marquee domains, uh, which is pretty much what I started to do. Right. So how did you make that transition then? Obviously seeing that uh, he had, you know, paid that, that large sum of money in terms of 30,000 back then, like what was your next step after seeing his success? I mean, what did you, did you start researching domains? Did you start, you know, um, I guess you say establishing your financing or, you know, what went through your mind to make that leap, that next leap from your hyphenated domains to premium well, domain? Luckily I was, uh, I- in addition to spy software, I was always working on other side projects. Um, like I said, I, I'm an experimenter. Like, uh, I, I even still, I, I get an idea and I run with it. I'm, I'm not, I'm not held back by, uh, by fear. <laughs> like, like some, <laughs> like I will run for it. And if it fails, then so be it. That's just a nice lesson learned. Uh, but I had other, other websites running at the same time. Uh, some of our larger sites actually were even up. Uh, so like transportreviews.com uh, was up and running back then. 
and starting to generate revenue. So I, I, I've bootstrapped it all the way. So I bootstrapped my way towards uh, a couple smaller domains, um, including autotowing.com, which right in that time frame of at the end of spy software is when I found, I think uh, snap names and some of the auctions Mm -hmm. and started to invest in those expiring domains and uh, found autotowing.com. And then it gets, it gets a little haywire from there. That's when uh, the the big money started to get spent. Uh, You know, I think I got auto towing for like 9,000, which was my first line of credit domain name, (laughs) uh, which I mean, 9,000 for a, for me back even then it it definitely required a line of credit and right because you were uh, in college right oh yeah yeah as of that point i was just out of college kind of rather broke actually Uh, (laughs) imagine that yeah spy software just uh kind of just crashed windows and microsoft kind of started to figure out that hey you know we might not want to give uh programmers access to all this data on the the back side of things and they started to put up security to prevent uh, you know, monitoring software from being something that could run easily on a computer. And uh, we pretty quickly, uh, I pivoted to get out of that because there's no, you know, the money was going away. Uh, but transport views and moving and uh, transporting vehicles uh, ended up being what was generating the money back then. So I, I bootstrapped it into some reasonable domains. Uh, the big move, though, was in 2007. Uh, that's when I literally mortgaged my house. I uh, I had autotowing.com and I kind of launched a business on it and uh, was starting to generate some revenue and starting to make some money off of it. It was a directory of towing companies and roadside service companies. And uh, the the lesson that I had learned previously with spy software is, yeah, I might have autotowing.com. I might have some business generating on it, but it can be taken away if somebody gets the better domain. And when you're sitting on autotowing.com, you might think, well, what's the better domain towing.com. So, right. uh, so I mortgaged my house. Now were you and, married at the time? Oh yeah. 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 I was, I was married. <laughs> How did that I, go? Um, it, it went okay. Actually it was, uh, <laughs> we, I, I had, I had proven the concept well enough to her to, uh, uh, for her to allow me to take the risk. Right. And, um, so yeah, she was pretty much on board. I, I negotiated with the guy for well over a year, uh, a guy named Randy out in California and he was the original registrar and, or the guy in, and he had it and he said, uh, you know, we finally came to terms and I'm scared to death because everything I ever had, uh, was on a one single check. We didn't use escrow. We didn't, you know, this was uh, two people <laughs> oh, meeting wow. over the internet, and uh, I was so scared that uh, I, I flew with the check out to California, had dinner with him and his wife and his son, and uh, gave him the check, and pretty much just prayed that uh, he transferred the domain, which uh, we sat in his uh, living room in Northern California, crazy wine area, and uh, he he did. He transferred the domain name, and I became the owner of towing.com, uh, which is really when things have taken off for us uh, wow. from being scrappers to, uh, I mean, towing.com's a, it's a successful uh, example of a premium domain name turned into a revenue generating business. Gotcha. And so now what did you notice in terms of going from auto towing.com to making that transition to towing.com? Um, obviously there are search engine implications, but then just credibility wise, like were there any noticeable differences or just, was it a subtle? Shift? Um, uh, it was, it was rather immediate. Uh, it was, it's slow, but immediate. Uh, we went from showing up for some keywords related to towing to uh, even still, even after the search engines over a decade has, they, it's changed how they handle domains and how, you know, towing is a very local uh, service. So there's right. a lot of local providers and things that, that block us and get in the way of our rankings. But uh, towing is still, it ranks consistently really, really high. Did from nearly, I think, 45 days after we got the domain, uh, it started to rank well and we've kind of never looked back i I think it's uh last look i think it's like 1.3 million 
search engine impressions in the rankings every month, Wow! Uh, which is just for something obscure or kind of obscure like towing. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it amazes me. It's, it really is a success. It's all because of the premium domain, all because of the, the search engine optimization that we've been able to do on it. And, uh, I, I'm, very blessed with uh, that, that crazy, <laughs> risky entrepreneurial right. journey to uh, go out there and get that domain. Wow. Wow. Now, you know, that's interesting in terms of, uh, you know, you, you're mentioning that. And then I, I just kind of think back and I go, okay, so is, so towing.com, I, I guess kind of walk through um, the business model, I guess, at a high level, if you will, in terms of what exactly is towing.com. Okay. Well, it's uh Towing.com is simply a place you go. If you break down on the side of the road, pull out your cell phone, you can Google towing or go to towing.com GPS and your phone shows you the providers uh, right in your area. So our model and the reason why this works, and this is essentially what we are, our, our business model that we hang our hat on is uh, this exact same model. It takes a premium domain name that any company in that industry would love to own. So, for example, all the towers in the, the nation, 30,000 of them or so, they'd love to own towing.com at some level. The only thing is, realistically, they're probably not, it's not valuable. They can't go out and buy a $180,000 domain name. You know, I think we paid one seventy five for it. And it doesn't make sense for a local company to do that. It, a local market's not going to benefit from it right so essentially it's kind of it's essentially timeshare it, it's they don't have ownership in the domain name but it's it's us taking this big national property and breaking it up into a bunch of little local parts and the local towing companies pay us a a low monthly fee to be listed in that area on the premium domain name so uh you know the companies that you see on towing.com they pay a small monthly fee to be on that site and uh, they get direct business from it, from the people using towing.com, but then they also benefit it from it uh, because it helps them in the search engine and it helps them generate direct internet exposure uh, because, of course, a premium domain name like towing.com linking to uh, their website and their company's information uh, does nothing but help them in the search engines and uh, generate business. So that's been a really great model uh, that's all based on you know us being willing to go out and spend the big money on a domain name uh, and then share that premium property with a bunch of small or, or smaller players gotcha now what other properties in addition to towing.com do does uh moving sites operate um well we had, we were, we're called moving sites because we do a lot in uh, moving and transportation uh, that's kind of where that name comes from uh, we own movingcompany.com as well uh, that was uh, one that my wife fought me on you know, for good reason. It's uh, <laughs> it, it's it, we got that one. Uh, we bought that, and it ended up we didn't know it when we purchased it. I think we got it for uh, you can look it up in the record. I think it's like two hundred five, uh, the most expensive domain. I, we bought the date, and uh, it had a manual action on it for the search engines. Uh, it was uh -oh. it was it, yeah it was a it was a bad asset. So we've been battling. Uh, for well, since we bought it years ago, uh, to recover that domain, we've had some mild success, but right. uh, but realistically, we we have a great domain, but it was poisoned before it got to us. And, um, uh, and what insight would you add to that, knowing that? Because that's something that you know, I think we're, I think at times, if you're you're out there, you're seeing domains, you know, you're you've kind of got the glitter in your eye of, oh my goodness, I can't believe this domain is available, it's out there. But now, you know, knowing your experience of moving dot com and being on the other side of having a tainted domain, like what do you recommend or what would you suggest in regards to? Um, I guess doing your due diligence. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I'd be curious to to find out what others do. My experience is the domain's still a valuable property that right. I, I would still buy it again. Uh, it makes money. It's just it's not it's not able to deliver the lucrative value that towing dot com does for towing companies. Uh, because it's slower in the search engines, so we get. So unfortunately, we don't get to charge the premium rates. We don't get the the high amounts of traffic yet. 
it's just a matter of yet over time it will increase it's just it's it's been a little bit of a disappointment but the the assets there so uh we have passed on domain names uh because they couldn't or couldn't or wouldn't confirm uh whether there is a manual action on it uh in the webmaster tools and things uh which that's the only thing that i could say to do due diligence wise would be uh ask them to kind of confirm or to certify that it's uh that there's no manual actions against it right but realistically uh when we buy a domain name we're buying it we're not expecting traffic on it day one we know that that's our role is to turn you know the property that blink uh, canvas of premium real estate and build something on it that generates, you know, business and value for users. So uh, while we have had it prevent us from buying domain names, uh, it's not very common that we really, it, it's, it would only be if somebody is really pushing the price and saying, I'm only selling it at this really high price. Uh, and we could only justify it if that domain is sparkling clean and just ready to go from day one, uh, which is why we held off on uh, whatever. I can't remember which domain it was, but we held off on uh, w- uh, one of our domains that we really, really wanted to get. But uh, they kind of went radio silent on us once we started to push for whether it was uh, a clean domain. And so, yeah, I don't I don't really have advice. I, I'm always uh, open to it. Uh, but realistically, when we go to buy, we're willing to spend the money and we just do it and uh, figure it out from there. Right now. And, and I know we we use the term premium domains, but then, you know, what does I guess what is your definition of premium domains? How do you define it in regards of looking at domains um, as assets in terms of knowing that you have, like, for instance, towing dot com, you know, Obviously, that's one, but then what qualifies, you know, as a premium domain to you? Uh, for us, we deal in uh, generic, exact search terms, uh, all dot coms. Uh, so we're looking for the marquee industry defining terms. So, uh, for example, towing.com represents the towing industry. We have actually a lot of other towing domain names, uh, all dealing with towing. Um, then we have movingcompany.com. Uh, let me see. At the live auction, we bought bodyguards.com, which it's an exact. But the name's con. Yeah, that was at the name's con. So, oh, okay. uh, so we bought bodyguards.com. Uh, and once again, that will be uh, most likely the exact same thing. If you're looking for bodyguards, some kind of local right. or security service, you'll be able to find them on that site. So not not yet, of course, but... Uh, so we look for those premium generic, ideally we want them to have a tie to our existing businesses, uh, in moving transportation. Um, so you're right there in that, like you said, the moving transportation or logistics, uh, correct. that that's your sweet spot. Then that's where you found, um, quite a bit of success. Yeah. Yeah. We, because we already have good, you know, good sites, good search and optimization, we can kind of launch a new site and, you know, tweak it in such a way that the new site can uh, benefit usually pretty quickly and uh, start generating revenue, which of course is the goal is to uh, put these sites up and make as much, you know, get them generating and making uh, the money back on that, uh, the money that you spend. So uh, we have a pretty good business model to do that. Um, But it does require, you know, as quick, it's just like if you were to buy a property, build a building, uh, you know, apartment building on it, uh, you know, that apartment building might look really pretty, but uh, unless you have people paying to rent those spaces, it's not going to do much for you. So uh, by just having a spoke uh, from our existing businesses, uh, a tie to it, then it, it helps us get things going right from the get, you know, day one it's launched. We can talk to current customers and, uh, hopefully get some business and sales day one and get things moving. Right. So why this, I guess the, this infinity, this affinity rather, um, with transportation moving and logistics. Uh, it's kind of just my somehow along the line has been just where my background ended up. My dad's a truck driver. Ah. Uh, so uh, back when I was, I mean, we're talking kindergarten back when you can actually ride in the the cab of your dad's, you know, semi truck, he took me around in his routes and, uh, took me into, 
his uh, his you know terminal, and uh, they showed me around the office and showed me around all the docks and all these trucks and two wheelers and forklifts running around all over the place. And I was, I, I remember saying like, I want to do this. This is so great. <laughs> and uh, and my dad luckily kind of he grabbed me, took me to the office, and said, I don't want you out there with you know the the guys doing the trucking and the warehousing. I want you in the office. I want you to to go to college and. Uh, do more with transportation than just, you know, trucking and run a truck. And somehow or another, you know, 15 years later or so, that's exactly what I did. I, my degree is in transportation and logistics, actually. Ah, so, okay. So yeah. it makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. So then you're, you're really capitalizing on really a bit of personal educational as well as professional experience then, um, to have been able to have developed uh, these properties such as towing.com uh, and I think you said card transport.com and then yeah. transport reviews.com. Yep. Exactly. So, Wait. so, how many, I mean, how many domains do you own or does moving sites own? Uh, you know, that's a, I get that question and it, it varies. Uh, I think that we're right around uh, a little over 600 domains. Okay. Um, around 500 of them are what I would call premium domains. Uh, some of them are just, you know, <laughs> get, get, stay up late one night and register a domain that sounds good. And, uh, but yeah, you know, I, so about 500 premium domains, uh, that are pretty quality that could be developed. And, and I should say when we buy domains, we buy them to develop. We don't, uh, we don't speculate. Well, 99% of the time we don't speculate uh, we buy a domain with the purpose of developing it for a purpose, right? Uh, which is why, you know, in the grand scheme of things, we do not own a huge portfolio, but the portfolio we own is very valuable to us. And we don't uh, really look to sell them. Uh, we do sell them, but uh, we, we typically aren't out to sell or out to buy. Right. Okay. So then you said a, a roughly around about 500, then what percentage would you say are actually developed into websites versus maybe redirected or versus parked? Uh, nearly. I mean, we, we, for a, for a while, uh, we developed a lot of them really poorly. Um, but as uh, what I think it was the penguin Google update or something uh -huh. uh, domain names really took a hit as to how they were treated in the search engines. Uh, so we got rid of all of our uh, kind of feeder sites and sites that really didn't bring much value to the user and just redirected them to uh, our main site. So uh, I'm guessing we have less than a dozen actually developed sites uh, and probably three or four of them that I would even care to name right uh, so it's it, we really tried to pull everything in and, and concentrate on our main sites uh and we're just now getting ready to kind of expand it again we think we have something that works and we're going to try to to duplicate it repeatedly now so we'll see how it goes right now is that something that that you would recommend in terms of other website owners or developers so for instance you know let's say someone has uh well typically a small business or medium-sized business or any really any business um at all typically has a primary website uh that you know they're operating but then do you recommend um or have you seen great benefit obviously having additional domains um under your belt or as a part of your portfolio and then redirect it to that primary site uh if you use it well yes um we don't always use it well but when we do we see as much success with a redirect as we do without right uh, so for example i would highly recommend so in towing for example we own roadsideservice.com and uh, a bunch of secondary sites Mm -hmm. uh, we found that if you redirect a domain name to a section or what I call a content silo, a part of the site that's specifically all that content is for that subject. So in this case, like roadsideservice.com, if we redirect it to roadside service related content, uh, you can do rather well in those keywords. Uh, but if you just redirect it to the homepage, you're, you'll get a little bit of a boost uh, but it's realistically, you're not going to pick up all that extra, you know, keyword specific traffic. Right. Now, do you, I guess, do you measure, so I, 
do you measure any of that traffic that you're redirecting from those domains? Like, are you using Google Analytics to be able to tell, okay, well, roadside uh, service.com or roadside assisted service.com? Um, you know, it's redirecting, you know, 50 visitors, 100 visitors a month, or is it just a, a blind redirect to where you don't even track metrics? Um, the metrics are out there. I don't concentrate on them much, though. Um, I, so we have analytics across pretty much all of our sites. Right. Uh, just just Google Analytics. Uh, I could probably figure it out, but in reality, um, only when we want to spend time on it for the purpose of moving us closer to our mission right. or the mission of the site. So, of course, the mission is to help our customers win, which is all of our sites. That's what they do. Is you know, towing.com, it helps small businesses. It helps towing companies win. Uh, so generating more traffic, yes, that helps them win. Uh, so, you know, we might look at the analytics when we kind of have an initiative to, to see if we can do better. But uh, realistically, there's always so many opportunities and so many things you need to do right. uh, that uh, we measure what we care about. That's not really one of the things that we care about on a, uh, you know, go on and look at the analytics. Correct. And, and, and likely is the case, you know, I would say due to one of the reasons you own that premium domain. Yeah. And so you have bigger fish to fry. Correct. It, the, the beauty of it is, is we see people, uh, you know, use secondary domains. Uh, they'll shoot up in the search engines by using different tactics. Uh, and then because we have such a premium domain, uh, all we have to do is tweak a couple of things and, uh, over a course of a month or so, we can uh, regain our position or, you know, increase in ranking. Um, it, you know, it's a little bit of a cat and mouse game. Uh, we let it, we can let other, it, we can be the the fast follower rather than the leader because uh, because of that premium domain. So somebody will show us a great way to rank well, and we just duplicate it and hopefully do it a little better. And then the premium domain takes care of giving us the advantage uh, to take them over. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not rocket science. Uh, we, we don't really do anything that's uh, cutting edge, right? Uh, it's just basic business. That's, uh, effective. Exactly. Exactly. So then shifting gears a bit here and we'll come back to a little bit about, uh, the mo moving sites.com, but then also noted or, or, or run across or discovered, um, that you also have a company, I guess it's Valley Solutions Inc. Correct. Where you uh, buy, sell, and then lease premium domains. So, I mean, tell us a little bit uh, about the role that Valley Solutions Inc. plays in the domain industry, as well as your role as president. Okay. Well, that's uh, pre Valley Solutions is uh, the asset holding company that I run. So, all of our domain names, towing.com, uh, bodyguards, all of those are actually owned by Valley Solutions. Ah. And uh, they all, so when we want to develop a site, uh, we set up a lease agreement between moving sites and our asset company. So uh, the way we're actually set up is uh, we can lease domain names and develop them whether we own them or not. Uh, so if you had, for example, a premium domain name, you're like, hey, I've always wanted to develop this. It seems like it would fit perfectly with your business model. Uh, let's run a partnership on this in some way. Uh, we would be able to say, yeah, let's put together a lease. We'll lease it for some monthly amount or some you know, contract on the back end. And then we would develop, manage, and operate that business on the front end with moving sites. Uh, so they're, they're very much separate entities and different purposes. But Valley Solutions is the asset side of it. So uh, if we do something stupid on the moving sites operation of the business, uh, you know, Valley Solutions is actually who owns that asset uh, and they can choose what to do. And uh, the lease is what protects us uh, from selling that domain out from underneath uh, ourselves, I guess you can say. But, right. um, but yeah, all the domains are there. That's just Valley Solutions. I'm from the Mill Creek Valley and here in Cincinnati. Uh, dates back to my earliest business uh, from the Valley. And that's where Valley Solutions comes from. And uh, so, yeah, that's just a, this kind of little silent company that sits in the background. But all of our domains purchased, sold, anything, uh, all of it happens to Valley Solutions. Uh, anything that we create and operate all happens on moving sites. 
Gosh, and then do you do you also help uh, individuals or companies find domains? Um, not necessarily. I mean, we have. Uh, I've definitely helped uh, and advised friends and uh, family on um, buying domain names, and I, I love it. This is what I do. Business is it's just part of who I am. Been doing it since uh, first grade when I sold, <laughs> sold school supplies and different things back then, and uh, origami. <laughs> but, uh, I, I love it. Like I love doing this. And when people tell me they want to start a business, one of the first things I do is try to find the, a premium domain or something to go with it. And, uh, so I, I mean, it's not something I do for hire, but, uh, I, I mean, right. I guess I could, if somebody really needed advice, but, uh, realistically it's, it's just a, it's fun and passion for me. Now, have you ever tried or attempted to develop a non-premium domain name? Absolutely. Yeah. We've, uh, we've done it occasionally transport reviews, for example, I think is a non-premium domain name. Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty good generic, but when we created it, it was, uh, we were creating a brand rather than a premium, you know, rather than right. generic. Um, let me see really for the most part, I don't have any projects out there that are brandable domains or brandable products, but, mm-hmm. um, I don't, I don't want to name them off because they're, <laughs> they're such a obscure <laughs> things, but yeah, I've done a, you know, a comedy site uh, right. back in, uh, the early days I did a comedy website, which is very, a, a very, very brandable name and got quite yeah. a bit of traffic was on and it's niche. Yeah. Yeah. Very niche. It was on comedy central featured on there. Even it was uh, oh, nice, but completely for the fun of it. Like it just, you know, uh, I think we sold a t-shirt once. Uh, thanks mom. And uh, it was, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was, uh, it, but no, I, for the most part, I'm uh, generic.com nowadays. Um, you know, we'll get, I, I, I might mess with it. It. I, I love right. business with the business tells me, Hey, go for something brandable. Then uh-huh. so be it. Like if, for example, if we did pay-per-click advertising or paid traffic, if that was our business model or that's how we thought that we would generate our users, uh, then I would completely do something brandable, uh, because our business model is based on search engine traffic. Uh, that's why we go generic. Right. And, and you're and you're referencing more organic search traffic than, Correct. than Correct. PPC um, or, you know, just SEM. Yeah, all of our all of our sites currently, uh, we do a little bit of pay per click to generate uh, business leads. So customer leads, mm-hmm. but we do zero pay per click advertising right now on any of our sites wow. uh, to generate visitors. Those visitors find us naturally in the search engines and just through reputation of the domain and our roles in those industries. So, uh, yeah, we, it's all free. Wow. No, that well, <laughs> free, <laughs> free, but, uh, based on that, you know, you gotta go buy that domain name before you ever get to, uh, so no, it's not free, but we made the investment early, I guess you could say. Right. Right. Now, you know, shifting gears, you made me kind of a question that came up there where you said, Hey, I focus primarily on generic, uh, you know, category defining premium domains. So, uh, you know, what, what are your thoughts in terms of like the, uh, the new GTLDs or top level domains? Okay. Well, um, I, I think I own two .NET domains, uh, I own one .org domain, but uh, just recently with the launch of .app, uh-huh. I uh, that's the first time I've ever dabbled in other extensions. Right. Uh, I think we bought around a dozen, you know, twelve to twenty rather premium domains. Um, and uh, but we we did that because one is backed by Google, uh, but it's also it makes logical sense. I'm a very logical. Uh, you know, I, I like to think it through and have dots connected right. uh, and dot app makes sense uh, be, mainly because dot coms rule the search engines uh, for web traffic dot app. There's a whole app store where search matters. And right. I, I think that there's uh, it's all it's going to do is move more and more towards a web type platform dot app. I th- it's a little bit of a speculation, but I think that uh, dot apps going to rule app search. Right. So, so we go from really native applications to more like progressive web apps. Correct. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so we went out and bought, uh, you know, some pretty big ones. I, I'd love to have the dot coms, but we only have the dot app, like wedding dot app was, uh, we bought that like 
day two, I think. Uh, wow. Back when it was expensive and we put some money into it behind things and, and, and that's okay. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do with them. Wow. Yeah. I think, so I registered one dot app. It was actually event planning dot app. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously not the, uh, not event planner, but Hey, it's still uh, a searched phrase. And oh, yeah. so, yeah. Uh, and, and I looked at it and I said, Hey, if I were to develop something that's going to be around, I mean, it could, you know, that could go a number of different ways in terms of directory, um, or you could list event planning apps if you want it. But, um, yep. but yeah, I, I invested in that, that one. Um, and, it, and that was actually just a, a hand registration. Uh, mm-hmm. once it opened up to the wow. general public. So that's a pretty good one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, so that, that thought it crossed my mind about whether or not you or rather moving sites would find itself playing in that arena of developing, um, some of the, the, uh, new GTLDs. Yeah. We, I mean, for the most part, the dot app, we are not an app development company. I mean, we have, uh, our coders are all web, including myself. I'm a web developer. So uh, uh, we do all front end web development, well, full stack web development. Um, so nowadays there's quite a bit of crossover between web and app technologies. So uh, I don't know what it looks like. I don't have anybody in here really that even knows what it looks like, but the idea of launching a, uh, you know, an app similar to our business model that we use on the web, uh, it's it's going to end up happening, but we're talking, you know, probably a, a year or two out for us. Right. Uh, so, you know, like usual, we bought it with the idea of, of developing it. Uh, just it's out there on the timeline a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I, it's the first time I really saw something and saw the opportunity beyond because um, search engine optimization dot com's king still. You can do stuff with other extensions, but uh it's that dot com is just that authority, which realistically is what my company deals with is authority. Right. Whether it's through the domain name or whether it's through uh, a, a role in an industry or even an individual or a celebrity, if we can take that authority that they have and, and cast it over a larger amount of smaller companies, uh, that's, that's what we do. Gotcha. Now you mentioned uh, that you have uh, employees. So how big are, are both companies? Uh, right now, I think we're sitting at seven people. Uh, it's going to scale up somewhat quickly here. Uh, we're getting ready to grow. Um, I, I, it's one of my restrictions, though. I never plan on being larger than twelve people. We'll see if I ever if I can keep that. <laughs> but uh, I, I like having a cap, so right. <laughs> I try to restrict it to twelve. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're currently at seven people, and uh, you know, half of us work in the office, half of us are uh, remote most of the time. Gotcha. So then, you know, shifting gears here, then obviously what's next for movingsites.com, you know, specifically, I know that you talked about um, there's an upcoming documentary. So I know definitely share with our listeners a bit about what's going on there. Yeah. uh, It's exciting stuff. So we are uh, sitting in NamesCon when I sat and looked at that list of domain names that they were going to have up for live auction. Uh, Some of them fit our, our business model and, uh, I've been wanting to grow our company. I mean, we, we grow as it is, but I was, I've been really wanting to take our business model of putting directories on uh, premium domains and, and really scale it. And uh, so I, I, I'm setting an ambitious goal for our company. And that is uh, we want to take three premium domain names, not just one, not two, but three premium domain names and uh, plan the business create the the websites and the business and then launch it, sell it, get it up and running all within six months, months, all generating over $25,000 total in monthly reoccurring revenue, all hopefully by NamesCon 2019. That's the premise of the documentary. So uh, we're taking premium domain names and from scratch, like just premium domain name and building a business uh, using just our experience so far. Uh, and I will tell you, we're a seven person company, but there's no chance of us doing this without, uh, changing significantly. (laughs) So it's a very intimidating, uh, a very intimidating goal that we're setting. Uh, but yeah, we're going to launch three businesses. Uh, the only one that I know that we're going to do 
so far as bodyguards.com. Uh, that's one of the ones that we purchased. The other two, I'm a little undecided. Uh, so those will be probably some of the first episodes is deciding which domains we're going to use or, <laughs> or acquiring even a new domain if we don't have one. Um, and yeah, it's uh, the, the name of it is from thought to profit is what we're going with. And uh, we're going to have some information on from thought to profit dot com where you'll be able to register and find out information as it comes around. It's going to be a web documentary. So I uh, have some video people that are uh, going to be recording things uh, and, uh, editing it together. And we're going to be putting out, it's going to be like uh, eight to 10 minute episodes weekly, starting uh, sometime in August or September. And, uh, the episodes will be episodic, which basically, uh, is the fancy term that I learned on Google. That means <laughs> uh, each episode is going to have a story. So, right. uh, the idea that, uh, we're, as you go to create a business, you're going to run into issues. Right. And as we run into issues, we're going to have to figure out the solution. So each episode will be us encountering an issue and us figuring out the solution. Uh, so the hope is that uh, other ambitious people, other people that are out there looking to start a business, other domainers that have this great domain, and they're like, man, I just wish somebody would buy it, but maybe I'll just develop it instead. Whatever it is, they can see it as less of a domain name, more of an opportunity to develop a business. And, uh, and they can see how we do it. It's really not that intimidating. Of course, we have a little experience and I'm a, a programmer, so there's code involved, but man, it, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, we, we just want to show people how it's done. Right. No, no. Or and... fail trying, <laughs> which, <laughs> which I put success at maybe, uh, I think our chances of success are about 40%. Uh, it, it's early. So we'll see Hopefully right. the odds go up as a some point, but there's a, very likely a high likelihood of failure. So right. pretty good reason to tune in and, and see how, how, if it's working or not. So, right. But I think, I think that, I mean, I think that is just, you know, the very essence of it all in terms of when you step into um, the domain industry and it was an episode. Matter of fact, I just recently uh, did an episode about why a domain investor should consider um, domain development, you know, to diversify, because obviously, I mean, you can, you can buy a domain, you can flip it, you can park it, uh, you can do a long hold, you can lease it, but then there's something about development that, you know, out of all the others, it seems to lend itself. Um, yes, there's great risk involved, but in my opinion, it seems to lend itself to one of the greatest rewards. Yeah, it's uh development of premium domains. Like it's, I hang my hat on it. Like I, I was literally mortgaged my house on that whole idea of developing <laughs> premium domains is uh, it's what I do. It's what I'm excited about. It's uh, I definitely highly, it, you can take, and I, I actually, I listened to that episode. So I, I hear you talk about it a bit, but you can take that premium domain uh, in some cases, put up a very basic website uh, we have domains that we actually have plans to do it on. It's just, it's kind of small potatoes. So we don't do it, but what small potatoes for us is not necessarily for other people, but, uh, you know, we take as premium domain, do some basic, like 16 hours of learning how to do some HTML and you'll be able to put a website up. If the domain's premium enough, so you can easily make three to $6,000 in reoccurring revenue monthly. Right. Um, which you figure that out over the course of what it's going to take you to finance a domain or whatever. And, uh, it's, it's good money. It's, it's a, it's a living, it's reoccurring and passive because typically there's not a lot of turnover or churn. Uh, it, I highly recommend it. Uh, it, it's, it's a good business model. Right. And I, and I think that's one of the things of you, how you found success has really been based around you've, your ability. One, obviously, you have a, a software development or engineering background, but then uh, I also liken that to there's a personal experience that you now you've been able to combine the two. And then in addition to that, you, um, excuse me, mix in uh, premium domain names. And so now you have something. Mm -hmm. versus, you know, you go out and buy a domain name that you may not have experience in, or you don't have a development background. And so you, 
you know, you're, you're mixing a lot of weaknesses, but not coming up with necessarily a strength versus yours is you've mixed a matter of strengths, um, you know, to, to create this one, I guess you'd say colossal kind of powerhouse or juggernaut um, in terms of the sites like towing.com. And so a bit of that, you know, it's like, would we have the same story if you were to go out and purchase another domain? Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, that's kind of the question. It all started somewhere though. It all started with that, you know, the spy software domains and, uh, figuring it out. I may, of course, experience now allows me to be able to make a big investment and have a feeling, you know, rather confident that, uh, the money's going to come in off a domain. Uh, but it, I had to learn everything that I know as of this point, very few, little of it was taught in college. Uh, it was all just learned on the internet, just YouTube videos and, uh, you know, code Academy and, uh, trial also, and error. <laughs> yeah. It's just figuring it out, uh, and just grinding and grinding at it. And, uh, the nice thing is, is if you have a premium domain name already or something that you just kind of got lucky enough to stumble across. And now there's a whole industry around it, but uh, you're just kind of waiting for a payday. Skip the, skip that future payday and go for uh, go for a lifetime of reoccurring revenue is pretty much the way that we go with it. Wow. Wow. So then wrapping up here, I mean, if you, if you had to do it all over again, uh, would you do anything different? Uh. <laughs> I would uh, go a little <laughs> faster uh, to where I am probably just from the experience, but no, I it's, it's been one hell of a journey and I've really enjoyed it. Wow. Wow. So then, I mean, obviously in terms of, I, cause I know I asked that question to, to some people and they're like, Oh, they do have pivotal points or moments that stick out. Um, but I love hearing that, that, you know, it's like what you lived is what you lived and, but you've also taken those past experiences and you're applying them to future ones, mm -hmm. um, which is exciting to hear. So what would your advice be to someone wanting to start uh, a website about a passion or an interest? Like what would you tell them? Hey, here's the first thing that you should know. A passion or an interest. Yeah. Um, I mean, it just comes down to whether it's passion or an interest or to make money. <laughs> right. uh, that would be the key difference. Uh, passion or interest, just do whatever. Uh, you know, I, I'm a journaler, so I journal all the time uh, or frequently. And uh, what I find out is uh, when you journal, a lot of people, because it's passion, it's, it's you dumping your heart onto a page and trying to figure out life. Uh, a lot of people don't want, they, they feel they need to write in proper format or follow some unspoken rules on how to do it. That's good. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is when you're, when you're doing something that you're passionate about, that you're interested in, uh, if it's coming from your heart or your, your love for something, just do it. Just take the action necessary to give your chance uh, uh, to learn and to, to do something. Uh, that action, it just grows and grows and you're going to learn new things. Uh, and get better and better at what you do, whether it's journaling, creating websites, uh, sharing your story. Uh, it just takes experience, but uh, taking those first steps is vital. Gotcha. So last but not least, is there anything you would like to share with listeners? Uh, you know, I really, for the most part, uh, I'd love to have everybody watch that. Uh, check out the documentary. So you'll be able to go to uh, from thought to profit dot com. Uh, you'll be able to sign up for a waiting list uh, and basically a mailing list, I should say. And we'll let you know when the episodes start to air. Uh, and really, our goal with that is just to bring value. You know, we're not uh, it's really not made. It's it should be entertaining. But realistically, it's going to be a, a fun jury journey that we'd love people to watch and uh, join and interact with us as we go on it. That's good. That's good. And with that, hey, we're out of time. So Drew, man, thank you again for joining us today and sharing your domain investing story and entrepreneurial journey, developing premium domains into business models. Alvin, thanks for having me.
Yeah, definitely. And thank you listeners for tuning in to Kickstart Commerce, where we share search marketing and domain name investing strategies to help grow your business. Last but not least, please subscribe to this podcast via Stitcher, Google Play, iTunes, Podbean, or however else you desire to listen to this podcast. And then please visit kickstartcommerce.com and in the right hand corner look for the daily scoop newsletter and uh sign up for that and like i said i will you'll get basically inside tips and tricks whether it's uh in regards to search marketing uh, wordpress fixes tips and tricks and then domain investing strategies to help grow your business so thanks and that's all for now 